Hello, everybody. This is Hondo Carpenter, your Las Vegas Raiders beat writer on Sports Illustrated. It's good to be with you today. Thanks for joining me. I am also the host of the Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast, as you know. And today I want to talk about the case for Mark Davis. And I have been fascinated over the five years that I've covered the Las Vegas Raiders. Fascinated by looking at how Raider Nation looks at him, um, the way that they, the approach that they take with him. And I want to offer you a perspective from outside. I want to offer you a, a thought process with Mark Davis, because I think we're watching, you know, and he's a grown man, but I think we're seeing the maturation of an owner. And every owner changes. Every owner goes through a metamorphic period. And I think we're seeing that with Mark Davis. And I want to talk about it in straight talk today. Now, anytime you talk about an owner or whatever, people instantly say, oh, Hondo has to say this, or he doesn't have to say that. He's kissing butt. He's trying to. No, no, I, that's not the world that I roll in. I believe I, and I believe because I, I know Mark Davis to be a, a honest probably to his own detriment at times, if that can be the case. I think if you were to ask Mark, he would tell you that he and I have a very good relationship. And I'm not saying that we're drinking buddies, but we have a very good relationship, at least I, in my perspective it is, and I think I have a pretty good perspective. I respect him. I think he respects the work that I do. Um, and But I don't have to come out and be supportive of Mark Davis. My credentials are not limited. Mark's not a petty two-year-old. If somebody's critical of him, he's not taking their credentials. Plus, I'm a professional journalist. But I'm going to take a perspective because I think it's fair. And I always endeavor to be fair. When I write an article, the th I, I don't sit there saying, gee, I hope people love it. I hope people hate it. I hope people walk away and say that was really good information and he was fair. He was fair because I think everybody involved deserves that. If you're writing about a man who makes his living playing a football game and you're critical about how he plays it, that's fair. But when you watch people then go out and say, oh, he dropped the pass. What a bum. He's a terrible person. That's not fair. Dropping a pass or throwing an interception or missing a tackle may very well indicate that you're not a good football player, but it has no indication of a person's character or who they are as an individual. The first thing that struck me when I started covering the Raiders is the, first of all, the impression of the Raiders has been that they're cheap and broke. Now, through my investigative work, and I've written about this before. There's no reason to revisit anything. The Raiders absolutely were a cash poor franchise for a long time. That's factual. That's absolutely factual. Now, I want to address something. There's a saying in football, you don't want to be the man that follows a legend. You want to be the man who follows the man who followed the legend. There is no greater owner in the history of professional sports in any sport anywhere on this planet than Al Davis. He has fundamentally impacted every professional sport and every professional sports franchise in the world. I shared with you a story once. I was, I was in an airplane and ended up sitting next to a man who ran a soccer team in Europe. And he talked about Al Day. He's the one that, that really opened my eyes to how big of an impact Al Davis had had. So here comes Mark Davis, the son of a living legend. He didn't come up on the path that his dad did. He wasn't a football guy. He, he was raised in a football home, but wasn't a football guy in the shadow of his father. I don't care how good of a dad you had, there's still a shadow when they're a legend. 
So he comes up in the shadow of Al, and then he inherits the team. Now, first of all, and maybe you didn't have a father, but if you had a father who cast a big shadow like I did, there's the normal grieving process of losing a parent. And now he's stuck in a chair that, quite frankly, and this is not being disrespectful of Al, but for the last several years of Al's life, Al didn't do, if you were rating that Al, you probably would have fired him. He wasn't the Al of old. The game was changing. But now you're in a chair that it wasn't like Al Davis groomed Mark for the job. I mean, you see what Jerry Jones is doing with his son. And you see what, you know, the ownership of the Giants did with their kids and the Chiefs and other franchises. That didn't happen with Mark. And all of a sudden now he's thrust into the chair that I believe, and, I, and, and this would probably piss Mark off if you really want to know the truth, because I'm saying something critical about his dad, but I'm, I'm not. Al is the biggest shadow in professional sports ownership, period. He's not just a sports icon. He's an American icon. But at the same time, he's not God. He's not perfect. And he didn't do a lot to help groom his son to lead the team. That's just a factual statement. But if anyone thinks at, that Mark Davis doesn't love the Raiders, you are clinically insane, in my opinion. He loves this franchise. There is nothing more that Mark Davis wants than for the Raiders to get a Super Bowl, than for him to be able to do what drove his dad every single day. Now, I'm going to be very blunt. I do not know. I think Mark felt that way from day one. I 100% believe that. I don't think it burned in him like it does today. I can tell you, and I, I would never betray Mark. I would never share our private conversations. That's between him and I, and I will honor him for that. But I can tell you personally as a man, there is nothing that burns in his belly more than winning. The man has eaten tens of millions of dollars when he's convinced the Raiders aren't going to win on the present course. There's nobody in the NFL. There is no owner, no owner willing to do that at the amount that he has. There's none. And he's just written the checks. Because he just feels like, got to move on. This is not winning. I have heard him described now as a as an owner with a, with a hairline trigger, meaning he'll pull that trigger quick. I, I think that's fair. And I think that's good. If you're convinced... My franchise isn't going anywhere right now. I'm making a change because I am all in on winning. Not, gee, I'm going to wait and eat this for two more years because it's financially better for me. He, Mark Davis has proven to everybody, I don't give a crap about the money. I want to win. And if it costs me tens of millions in eating contracts, as long as I get a Super Bowl, it's all I care about. It's all I care about. It's the only thing that matters to me. And so Mark Davis goes out. And does something that his father was never able to do. He gets his dad and his, his dad's franchise, excuse me, the most beautiful stadium in the NFL. And let me tell you, I've been to all of them. Nobody competes with Allegiant Stadium. No one. Period. And the best team headquarters. I mean, listen, the reputation for where Oakland had their team headquarters was that it was a dump. And for financial reasons, and because they were sharing with the A's, who were technically the primary tenant, the Oakland Coliseum was awesome because of what it represented 
but it was nowhere near the top in the NFL, and it cost the Raiders money. What did Mark Davis do? Did everything he could to keep the team in California. But when he literally could do no more, he went and got a tremendous deal from Las Vegas, who was starving for a franchise. They needed one. They needed the NFL. And Mark cut an amazing deal. If you don't like Mark Davis as an owner, that's certainly your right to an opinion. But if you don't recognize the fact, he is a far superior businessman to his dad. Al Davis doesn't even belong in the same room with Mark when it comes to being a businessman. And what did he do? He turned this franchise that was perennially broke. And I mean that term loosely, but certainly in a bad money situation into now a complete cash cow. There is nothing the Raiders can't do because of money. You just saw them spend millions to take the team to California for training camp. Millions. Doesn't care. And when I say he doesn't care, it doesn't mean he's flippant with the money. He isn't. He's a businessman. But if they go to him and say, hey, we need to do this. We think it'll win a Super Bowl. Go. That is not normal in the National Football League. There are some owners that way. And I would argue they're among the best. But it isn't even half the owners. So that cannot be undersold. Now there's no contract they can't write where you stroke a check for guaranteed money, where you give them a big check up front. There's no free agent they can't get. He has set the Raiders up long after Mark Davis is dead. The Raiders still will owe him a debt of gratitude for setting this franchise up financially for decades. I think you're looking at 30 years of prosperity. 20 for sure. 30. Probable. That puts the Raiders in an immediate awesome place of success. We're going to get to the on the field in a minute. But now let's look at Mark Davis, the owner. I talked to several people around the league, both ownership, league people, who said when Mark came in, they believed that uh, they used the term scarred. I think that's too harsh of a term. But I think certainly it was imprinted on him that there were times his father was acrimonious and maybe didn't need to be. And I was told when I first came to cover this team by someone in, in, in NFL ownership and in the league that he probably realized something his dad didn't, that you can catch more flies, you know, with honey than vinegar. And so Mark, for a while, had a reputation as he was going to do whatever the NFL commissioner wanted to do that he was one of those owners that was kind of a rubber stamp. But especially since he went get, got to Vegas, that's changed. And now uh, I'm hearing from people that Mark certainly wants what's best for the league, 100%, but that he's not a yes man to the league and to the commissioner. And he's willing to say, no, that's not good for the Raiders or no, that's not good for the game. Um, I, I, I want to be careful about giving exact details on something because it could give away who I talked to, but I will tell you there has been vehement conversations of which Mark Davis has been adamant his disagreements with the league where he feels like, um, 
fan interest was being overlooked compared to league interest. Um, I was told by someone recently who was who's privy to a lot inside the league that there isn't a more fan, pro-fan owner in the NFL than Mark Davis. That it's not fake with him. There isn't a and I want you to think about that. That is a big deal. That regardless of what team you root for, there is no bigger fan advocate in those owners' meetings than Mark Davis. That's pretty big deal. So he's evolved as an owner. Yep, I want what's best for the league, but I'm going to speak up when I'm wrong. And no, my vote isn't promised to you anymore. You got to earn it. And I'm not saying he promised it before, but that was the impression. So that's a good owner. That's a very good owner. Give you another area. Mark Davis is willing to go out and spend money. I mean, it's not a big deal anymore, although the length was. But when you looked at him giving Gruden 10 years, $100 million, nobody gives 10-year deals. No one does. But he so badly wanted to win, and the man he most trusted is a football mind, John Gruden. He's like, listen, I trust you, John. Go do this. Listen, you may think he made a mistake. You may think he was wrong in removing Gruden. You may think it was the right deal. That's not what this is about to debate, debate the Gruden thing. The point was he was willing to put his money where his mouth is to put somebody in there and then let him make decisions. Now, he went against hiring Rich Brasaccia, which I think was a mistake by him. But he listened to a lot of people around the league because he wanted the best advice. I'm going to tell you one thing about Mark Davis that he does not get enough credit about at all, at all, is he's one of the few people with the, in a world of monster egos of billionaire ownership who's willing to say what he doesn't know. I mean, since Bill Parcells especially has been there, the Dallas Cowboys have been a perpetual laughing stock in the NFL. Nobody does less with more than them because their owner won't admit what he doesn't know or do, or can't do. I mean, he goes, he goes on an F-bomb tirade recently uh, telling everybody how he's the only one or that he's the best guy to lead the Cowboys. Well, any other guy would be fired by now. It's not Mark Davis. I'm going to tell you, and I've known a few billionaires in my life. He is the most egoless billionaire I've ever met. Egoless. It is all about the franchise with him. It is all about winning with him. Winning, winning. You can't have a conversation with the man. Winning. 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 I'm sorry, if you're a Raider fan and that doesn't stoke your fire, you know what, can you point to things and say, you know what, probably shouldn't have listened to a lot of league people and hired Josh McDaniels. True. True. Now, in defense of everyone, I think there was a lot of people, I know, and I'm not speaking for Mark here, but I know inside the football management end, there was an expectation Tom Brady was coming here. And if Tom Brady had been here with Josh McDaniels, I believe it would have ended up being a completely different situation. And the Raiders thought he was coming. The Raiders had every reason to think he was coming. And no, Tom Brady did not lie to anyone. He didn't deceive anyone. Tom Brady didn't. Tom Brady's failure to become a Raider had nothing to do with any type of deceit or anything on Tom Brady's part. Things happened that I'm not going to get into because they don't matter. But things happened that it didn't work out. I respect Tom Brady for why it didn't work out. I respect him. And I'm not going to hold against the Raiders that they thought he was coming. But that would have looked completely different to add the greatest quarterback of all time. So I understand 
why Mark did what Mark did, you may look back and say now with 2020 vision, you know what, that probably wasn't a good move. Okay, that's fair. And I think Mark would tell you that's fair, even though I think circumstances change that situation more than anything else. I totally get it. I totally get it. But now he comes in today. He set the franchise up financially. He has established himself with respect now in the league. And he has said, listen, I want football people. He's listening to his key player. He's listening to people. I'm going to tell you right now, I think one of the best moves that Mark Davis did is having Richard Seymour around. Anyone that ever watched that man play football knew that that guy had one of the highest football IQs of anyone you've ever known. You show me an individual. I can name a lot of guys that had a football IQ like Richard Seymour. But I can't name one guy who had a better one. That man just played, even in a, even in a lineman spot, you could just see him think. This would probably piss Richard Seymour off, and I'm not trying to do that. There are guys that had more talent than Richard Seymour. But there were not guys that could outthink him and would outwork him. He is a quintessential Raider type player, smart, hardworking guy. And so Mark says, Hey, I want Richard Seymour around me. Duh. Smart. Hey, he wants to have a Tom Brady around him. Well, he's the greatest of all time. Okay. I don't fault him for that. Yeah, but we're Raiders, and I'm, I'm speaking with a fan voice. Raiders, we hate the Patriots. Okay, you hate the Patriots. Okay. But they're winning with Tom Brady says everything. If your franchise motto is just win, baby, don't you want to go get one of the greatest winners of all time? Maybe you don't. But I'm, I'm saying here, you can see where Mark Davis is going here. Hey, I want to surround myself with winners. I want those football people speaking in my ear. Now, do I think from time to time, some people get in his ear that he shouldn't let in? Yes. Who? Doesn't matter. But I do feel that way. But as he continues to grow as an owner, and every day that fire is burning, I think it's elite. And here's where we find him today. When Mark first got in that chair, I don't believe he was comfortable at all. How could he be? He just lost his father. He hadn't been groomed for the job. He probably had to be like he was. Remember when we were kids before water bottles? Were, well, some of you are young. But when I was a kid before water bottles and you're outside playing football or basketball or baseball with your friends, not on a on a game station or a, or a, a game cube. And you actually went over and turned on the hose and took a drink out of a hose. He had to feel like he was trying to get a drink out of a fire hose when his dad died. And now he's found his sea legs as an owner, financially establishing the team, which he had to do first. As an owner with the league shaping the direction of the league. And then finally, as an owner in a quest for a Super Bowl. I'll never forget the day they hired Josh McDaniels. And I was talking to Mark Davis right after the press conference. And uh, you can find the video somewhere, right? But he said to me that one of his father's biggest criticism of him was how close he was to the players. Now, that's not a quote. It's a paraphrase, but essentially that's what he told me. And this is a guy who was raised by a father that preached once a Raider, always a Raider, who was raised around. He grew up with Raider players. He grew up with them. And so, of course, there was going to be closeness. And yet here he is today. Here he is sitting here today in his life building something 
building something. He's not 40 years old. And he's listening to his players. He brings in Tom Telesco. I'm going to tell you right now. Tom Telesco was not his original first choice. But when he listened to Tom Telesco, things clicked with him. He listened to some things. And he listened to things that people told him the franchise needed. Tom Telesco may end up failing. We don't know yet. I would think that he's got a good shot at doing a pretty good job. I'm very impressed with Tom. But the point was, he listened. He listened. One of the biggest criticisms of Al Davis that I've heard from people that loved him and people that hated him was that he was a terrible listener. He would get in his head what he wanted to do and do it. And early in his career, for and for a long time, it worked. But it hurt him at the end. That's a fair criticism. Mark Davis saw that. My father used to say to us boys, I want you to look at what I do right and copy me. And I want you to look at what I do wrong and do it different. Mark Davis loves his father. And it's a love that runs deep. It's reverence. It's a reverence. I am sure, although he and I have not discussed this, like every child, including mine, there are things that probably wish his dad would have done different. My children feel that way about me. But there's a reverence and a love for his dad. And every day that he gets older, it is literally like throwing gasoline on the fire to win. Mark Davis is a good NFL owner. Now, will he win a Super Bowl? I don't know. But I'm going to tell you this. Whether he does or not, when he dies, he will have known he put everything into it. There are a lot of owners in the NFL who are laissez-faire. Cash my check. Don't really care. Then there are the guys that winning is everything to them. I will tell you this, and you may not believe it, and you don't have to. But if Mark Davis was told, you're going to lose your wealth. It's going to cost you five billion bucks for a Super Bowl. He'd write the check. I think AP is going to work out and be a good coach. I'm very supportive of that hire. Very. I think Tom Telesco was a good, solid hire. But we've seen solid hires fail before. But the point is, you've got an owner hiring football people, trying to to surround himself with football people whose business mind set the franchise up to financially succeed for decades, got you the best practice facility in the NFL, the best stadium in the NFL, and has set this franchise up. Al's failure to do that sent the Raiders on a downward spiral as the NFL changed. Mark Davis now has sent it back up. But we all know Mark Davis's legacy because of the Raiders is only going to be cemented by a Super Bowl. You don't know, and I don't know if he's going to get it. But he's doing the right things to get it. He's changing. He's growing. And if he doesn't get it, it's not going to be because Mark Davis is a failure. It's going to be because it's very hard to win those in the NFL. 
But Mark Davis has set this franchise up. Mark Davis has done his part. Now it's up to his football people to do theirs and his players to do theirs. The narrative of the Raiders being broke is broken in a joke. The narrative about Mark Davis not caring is ignorant and a joke. But the narrative of Mark Davis being a tremendous businessman who set his franchise up both geographically, both in building and plant, and both financially, and both surrounding himself with winners, and in both hiring football people and letting them do their job, is solid. And the fact of him impacting the NFL now by finding a voice and by being the number one fan advocate in those owners' meetings talks about his character. Say whatever you want about haircuts. Who gives a crap? But the man's done everything that he can to grow, to mature as an owner, and to do what's best for the Raiders. He may have made some bad decisions, but you can never question his integrity or his heart. You may, but if you do, you're the one that looks foolish. Because that's not who Mark Davis is today. It's not the Mark Davis that I have found. And I think when you look behind the mask, and I don't mean that he's fake. I mean the Raider mask. There's his face. And it's a face of a guy that I can tell you, knowing him on a personal basis, and many of you don't. The thing that burns in his belly is he desperately wants to win. Mark Davis has wanted a lot of things. I just mapped out for you many of them. But he knows to be known as a winner, he's got to host, hoist the Lombardi. And he's willing to do whatever it takes to get it. And I think it's time now for people to be honest and say he's got to win a Super Bowl when your franchise motto is just win. But he's doing everything to do it. And he deserves that respect.